beautiful Sabbath day to spend time with Jesus. Time with the Father, time with the Holy Spirit. What they are saying, what they are doing, how they are moving, and how we need to sit at the feet of Jesus. We not only hear his word, but obey his way. Mm-hmm. I'm going to share with you today, this Sabbath, not only we come into Jesus seven times a day, but the intimacy and relationship and fellowship that is the foundation for all things. He wants to first always give reverence to the Father. He is greater than all. He said, my Father is greater than all. He always honored and reverenced the Father above himself because he came from the Father. He went back to the Father. So, Whatever comes from the Father must go back to Him. The glory must go back to Him. The honor must go back to Him. The love that He gives you must go back to Him. And there are seven instructions. Month of not only July, but if you will take heed the wisdom, instructions, directions, and strategy from now to December, especially from now to especially from now to Rosh Hashanah. Take note of that. Because it's already speaking concerning five, seven, eight, four. This is the next number on the Hebrew calendar. First and foremost, he said, lay down the foundation tonight. If you never want to read, I'm going to be giving keys. You need to learn how to use these keys. All battles are first won in the spirit. Then it manifests in the natural. Cancer must be defeated in the spirit before people get killed in the natural. So on this Sabbath, as we rest, we are learning. Jesus said, come and learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in your heart, and I'll give you rest. While you're resting, you are learning. Rest in your soul. First, let me share many scriptures about the number seven. So please look, listen, learn. There's many scriptures that talk about seven times. It's written the seventh month of glory. Seven times. By grace, I would love to start with Psalm 119, verse 164. Seven times a day I praise you. Because of your righteous ordinance. And but you see what David said? I didn't even know this was in the scripture. See, when Jesus gave you revelation to give his people, at times Holy Spirit will give you scripture, but at times just be obedient. And then later on, Holy Spirit will tell you the revelation of Jesus, which he gave, see, he take you to the scripture. It's right there. Why we need to come seven times a day. David also did it. Wow. Psalm 119, verse 164. Seven times a day. Watch this. David came to God through praises only. So imagine you can come through worship. You can come through praise. You can come through thanksgiving. Psalm 12, verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words. 
silver tried in the furnace on earth refined seven times. So this is Revelation. Whenever Jesus gives you a word, he must first purify you uh-huh, and then try you by fire. See? Psalm 12, verse 6. The word of the Lord are pure. So he has to first purify you before anything manifests. You see? A silver tried in the furnace. See? Fire house. Furnace. Refined. So you have to go through purification and refinement seven times. This goes to the seven-year process. We are in the seventh month. And there are seven things Jesus wants us to do. And in co-laboring with him, will manifest what he has spoken. So everybody, you get the revelation? This is deep right here. Psalm 20, that means some people are still in the furnace. Seven times. If your seven times is not done, the word will not manifest. I need to read it again. Don't miss it. The words of the Lord are pure words. So whenever Jesus talks to you, you are pure. He just purifies you. Watch this. Because prophecy is not pure words. It's direction. It's the, it's the future. See? A silver tried in furnace on earth. Take notes. It goes back to the summertime, what he's been saying. Some are still in the fire. You, you might be in your fourth time or fifth time or sixth you need to learn the ways of, the, of Jesus, please. Whenever he gives you words concerning your destiny, your purpose, your identity, or even promises, inheritances, blessings, watch this. It takes you being in the furnace seven times before it manifests. Why? Because he has to purify you and refine you with the words of the Lord. Before it comes to pass, you must pass through. Come on, somebody. The furnace. So, every time you have a dream or a vision or a prophetic word from the Father and Jesus, as to what they are saying and what they are going to do, they must first purify and refine you first. Seven times. That can be seven years. That can be seven days. That can be seven times a day. That can be seven months. That can be seven weeks. When David fell, God told him to do seven days fasting. And they got to the baby. It's seven. There are instructions that you're going to be hearing by grace on this line and Zoom. If you will follow the set instructions, you see manifestation. It's already happening. I choose to keep certain testimonies first. Because we all have to come into the unity and oneness first. But you see, the words of the Lord are what? Pure. If you're not pure, guess what? The blessed are the pure in heart. They will see God. They will see the manifestation when they have a pure heart. See? Next one. You shall count seven weeks of seven years, <laughs> don't miss this. You shall count, this Leviticus 25 verse 8. You shall count seven weeks of years, seven times 70 years, so that in the time of the seventh week of the seventh year shall be 49 years. What does that mean? Speed of time. Everybody, please write this one down. Jesus wants to train and teach you how to use time to manifest promises. Right here. What takes seven weeks? See that? You shall count seven weeks of years. Go number seven. Seven times. 
seven times seven years. I go seven, seven, seven. So that in the time of what? The seven weeks of the year shall give you 49 years. Have you seen redemption of time? When you go to Jesus seven times in a day, what took many years will take you a few weeks and days. Feed of intimacy, relationship, fellowship, and communion. If you want on the line, if you desire that special and unique where you are actually relating the speed of light, take note of the number seven. Proverbs twenty four sixteen. For the righteous fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked stumble in times of calamity. Seven times. So at the end of tonight, I'm going to give you the seven instructions you just said. We should do. And one is your body. So please be ready for the instructions. You need the Holy Spirit to lead you how to do it. Then Joshua rose early in the morning. And the priest took up the ark of the Lord and the seven priests bearing seven trumpets. Let go number seven again. There is something about seven in the morning. Seven trumpets of ram horns. Ram horns. Now watch this. This is ram horns, right? But in Revelation, it's a lamb with seven eyes. How many of you know a mature lamb is a ram? Ram horn, seven times, seven eyes, seven horns. But this not this is not of a lamb. It's of a ram, a mature sheep. It's a ram. You cannot just stay a lamb. You have to mature into become a ram. This is it right here. Seven trumpets, seven seven priests bearing seven trumpets huh? of seven horns before the ark of the Lord walked on, and they blew the trumpet continually. Watch this. So they did it for six days. And on the seventh day, on the seventh day, they rose early at the dawn of the day. My God, my God, my God. And like you see the morning watch, dawn, that's fourth watch. Some of you, the Lord's about to give the instructions to do things in the morning. Seven times. Decree seven times. You see that? Joshua and the army and the priest, they woke up early in the morning and seven times a day they went around Jericho for six days. Some of us are ready for instruction like this. I was going to give you instructions to do something for six days or for seven times in a day. Seven times in a day, they went around Jericho. The next day, seven. The next day, seven. was six days. On the seventh day, what happened? How many of us are ready to obey and get the results? This is the, it takes instruction and direction. The manifestation. One, rose early in the morning for watch. Watch this. It was on the day that they marched around the city seven times. Hmm. What do you need to march around this month? <sighs> Come on. Come on. Oh, yes, Lord. Hmm? It was only on that day that they marched uh-huh, And at the seventh time, when the priest blew the trumpet, Joshua said, shout, for the Lord has given my father. Ooh, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Look, you might have to shout seven times for the Lord to give you some things in this season. Come on, somebody. Did you catch that revelation? Joshua said, shout, 
You can give instruction. And what happened? Wow. Everyone in prayer line. So God will give me a city if I just shout? Whoa. What, is, what does the Lord want to give you in this season? That he needs your shout. Joshua said, shout. Shout. It's a gift of war. The Lord has given you the city. So they went around the city seven times. And on the seven, no, sorry, seven times in the day. And on the sixth day, see, in the morning time, and on the seventh day, that's what he says right there. Mm -hmm. And at the seventh time, my God. Does everybody see the revelation and mystery right there? Uh, it takes, the word, it says the word of law will provide you seven times. The word of God is true. Seven year process. The law can give you things until you finish your seven year process. Look what he said. Seventh time, shout, the law has given you a sin. The law cannot give you certain things if you don't finish it the seventh time. Pass that test the seventh time. Come on. Finish that process in the seventh year. Come on. Come to him seven times in a day, and he's about to give you a city. How about that? My God, I'm excited for you all. What do you need to shout at for God to give it to you? That's one of the instructions he's actually tell you in this season. As you come to him, shout. Don't try and use your common sense. Just obey. Shout. Don't shout now. I'm just saying. This is the instruction God gave Joshua to get the victory. This is one that Jesus has to tell all of you. This July 1st, what should you do? Take note. You have to come to him seven times in a day. Take note. On the seventh time, shout. The Lord says he's going to give you. They receive a city. What are you going to receive for your shout? My God. What are you going to receive for your shout? The Lord has given you. No, it didn't say the Lord will give you. The Lord has given you. To let all of you know, He's already given it to you. What you're lacking is your shout. The shout releases the city. Oh my God. Ooh. See? Strange acts of obedience releases miracles. Shout. Why are you shouting in the morning for? Obey. Everybody write this one down. Joshua 6, 12 to 16. That's the first instruction for everyone. Everyone should please write it down. The Lord's about to give you instructions. You might have to speak to that sickness seven times and it will be healed. I don't know what instruction he's going to personally give you, but what I do know is it is like that of Joshua. You will have to be early in the morning at the dawn of the day. On the sixth day, he shouted seven times. And what did Joshua, the, 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 the prophet, do? Shout. He didn't say pray. He said shout. The Lord has given you the city. What is the Lord going to give you in this city? Sorry, in this season. It means your shout. Mm. First instruction. Everybody, that's it right there. That's your wisdom in this season. Instruction in this season. Direction in this season. And strategy. Shouting. Are you ready to shout for the Lord to give you something? Shout to the Lord. See the song? Shout to the Lord. All the earth. Let us sing. Shout. Jesus, in this season, needs your shout. And he's going to give you. Ooh, my God. Will we do it? Let's read it again. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets. 
You know, trumpet news is prophetic announcement. They blew the trumps continually. Take note. What should you be doing continually in this season? Seeking him continually. Seeking his face continually. Watch this. On the second day, they marched north. On the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So they did it for six days. All right, do you see the instruction the Lord's about to give you? What is he going to tell you to go and march around for six days? What is he going to tell you to shout to, to receive it? On the seventh day, they rose early. At the dawn of the day, everybody take note of that. For watch, and marched around the city in the same manner that we Do you know you cannot receive promises without instructions like this? How were they going to get the land and the city? You know this is what Jesus told me to do for Holy Way next year. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to be obedient. Drive around Florida seven times to get the city. How? No, God is not just going to come and put things in your hands, my friends. There are instructions you must do, and they are strange, they are abnormal, and they are difficult. If you will be obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Look at what they did. For a city. You're believing the law for the house. Do this. Whatever promise he made you, do this instruction right there. Mm. See? How were they going to get the city? They didn't have, watch this, they didn't have credit score. They didn't have realtors. To get a city. No, not a house. A city. God gave them a city. How? Just by marching. That's how you take territories. You take dominion over the land. You take territory by marching. The promises and the reward that he has for you. Instructions like this is what he's going to give you. Go and go around Florida. Seven times. And I'll give you the I'll give you the land. Some of you have to go and march around that thing that God showed you seven times. And then shout to give it to you. Woo You want that car? Go and go up. Look, it's time to act in this. This is it right here. Joshua. 12 to 16 for everyone. He wants to give you a city through your shout. Come on. How many times a day? They, they went around the city once every day. But on the last day, they did it seven times. And on the seventh time, they shouted. Look at the instruction God gave them to win the war and battle. You're about to receive such instruction and direction. Just be obedient and don't ask questions. We don't see in this context them asking questions, but they are obeying. God giving them a city. We want God to give you a city. This is it. Seven times a day you have to come to Him. Look at Psalm 119, verse 64. We read it again, right? Seven times a day, I praise you. How many times a day did David come to the Lord? Seven times. If David did it, you can do it. Genesis 33, verse 3. He himself went on before them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near his brother. How many times did Jacob 
bow his head to his brother seven times. Imagine you going to Jesus seven times a day and bowing down at his feet. What is he going to do for you? It is all throughout the world the seven times. Genesis 41 verse 5. And he fell asleep and dreamed a second time. Watch this. And behold, seven ears of grain, plum and good, were growing on one stalk. Seven cattle, seven sheep. Seven years of plenty. Seven years of famine. They go there seven, seven. Leviticus 4, 6. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle parts of the blood seven times. Today, I went to the gym to work out and Jesus had us speaking. He said, Decree my blood seven times a day. And the Holy Spirit said, go to Leviticus. This is for all of you. He said, decree. I hope everybody has a pen and paper wherever you are. You write to me, please. This is for you. Decree my blood. Watch this. In the five areas where you, where you love me. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, strength. He said, decree his blood seven times in those areas, and you will overcome. For we overcame by the blood of the Lamb. If you have not gained the victory over something in this season, this is what he wants you to do. Decree his blood seven times in that area. Mm. For we overcame by what? This season, as a matter of fact, the rest of your life, you can only overcome by blood. So second instruction, Jesus said, decree my blood seven times in your heart, seven times in your soul. You see that? All your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your body. Decree my blood, my glory, my love. This is what he said. My glory, my love, my blood, and my truth. In the five areas where you love me. Seven times in each area. So seven times in your heart. Let me tell you why. Don't miss it. Let me tell you why people are going to miss the promised land. He said three things. It's deep. We've taught on it before, but now he went deeper. He says, so ties, entanglements, and attachments. And he said, go to the scripture where it says, because of the error in their heart, the error in their heart, it missed the promise word. The children of Israel had errors in their heart. That's why they couldn't. We say, what's an error? Murmuring, complaining. That's an error in the heart. How many of you want to overcome that? You need to put the blood in the area where you are complaining. Come on, come on, come on. You are, you are getting strategy right now. Use the blood. And he said, my blood will begin to speak better things in your life. Second instruction. Love the Lord your God. Well, see, he said, there is love in my blood. Which areas are you struggling with in this season? Me is my body. He told me. He said you you pass every other area, but your your flesh is weak, just like my flesh was weak. He said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. His flesh was weak. He said your flesh is weak. Therefore, put my blood in your flesh. I said, wow. See. The area where you are the weakest, put my blood there. So he said, your heart, pass. Soul, pass. Mind, pass. He said, but your body is weak. Put my blood on your body seven times. So which area, all of you on the line, heart, mind, soul, body, strength. See these five areas where we are 
commanded to love the Lord our God, which one right now, as we are speaking, is your weakest? You have to put the blood there. Let me tell you why. Because he told me, this is where the enemy will sit you like me. I said, wow. They, sorry, whatever, watch this. When he told Peter, when he told Peter, the enemy want to sit you like me, that's what it was. It wasn't Peter's heart. It was his mind. So he didn't have blood on his mind. But he sifted Judas' heart. Oh, I wish I could see y'all face to face. Like, I love the phone, but I want to look in your face. Okay, you can get this revelation. Look, when the enemy wants you, right, he goes after the five areas where you love the Lord your God. If it's your heart, he's coming right there. He looks for the weaknesses. So as, we have, as the revelation is coming right now, all of you in the line, which of these areas is your weakest? That's where you can lose your harvest. They just told me your body. You see, but he don't just tell you, this is why I love Jesus. He tells you, just like the seven churches, they go to number seven. The seven churches, five passed the test, two failed. So when he comes to inspect you because he loves you, he will tell you, these areas, you love me the most, but your body. Love me with your body. And you can't love him with your body, come on somebody, without the blood. Then he says, that's why blood, sweat, and tears came out of my body. You need my blood, my sweat, and my tears on your body. Wow. This goes for all of you. Second instruction. He said, tell my sons and daughters the five areas where they are to become one with me. Heart, mind, soul, body. Strength. Don't miss this. Which area is your weakest? That's where the enemy wants to sift you like wheat. He told me mine was my body. And then one of the daughters called me today and said the same thing. I said, wow. Confirmation. What is yours? Is it your mind? Is it your heart? That's the it. Yes, Lord, I will tell them. Wow. Everybody, don't miss this. Revelation. He just said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, strength, right? Watch this. Promises, inheritances, rewards, blessings. Everybody see those? Those five goes in the five. Covenant, promise, inheritance, blessings, and Rewards, covenant, promise, inheritance, blessings, rewards. See, five, heart, mind, soul, body, strength. You see, so if the five go with the five, they, whichever, whichever one of them is the weakest, you can lose that thing in that area. So if your body is the weakest, you might lose out on your blessing. So, so that's why it says, that's why it says in Ephesians 3, strengthening the inner man. That means he says strengthen the things that remain. So out of the five areas, oh, this is beautiful for all of us. Which area is your weakest? That's where you need to focus on the most this month because that's the area she's going to use. See? Which one is it? Write it down right now. You should, you should know it. Watch this. You say, how do I know this? That's where the enemy has been tempting and attacking you the most. My, my body. What is yours? Is it your heart? Your heart can be the weakest. Your mind can be the weakest. You see, your will can be, not the Lord, your God, or your heart, mind, soul, body, strength. See this fight? Which one is your weakest? That's where the enemy is accusing you in court. And Jesus said, tell them to decree my blood in the areas where they are weak. 
That's the second instruction. So that you don't lose your harvest. My God, I have fire. Which one is yours? Mm. Which one is yours? So the first instruction was Joshua 6, 12 to 16. The second one is the areas where, okay, let's put it this way. What is the reward of loving God? All things work together for the good of those who love God. So one of the rewards of loving God is all things work together for your good. Boom. Two. I have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart. The things God is preparing for those who love him. Another reward of loving him is just preparing things your eyes have not seen. See? So, wow. If he's preparing things your eyes have not seen, then are the five areas where we are commanded to love him, which area is so weakest? That's where the enemy is attacking the most. And women, it is your mind. Men, it's your heart. He got Judah's heart. He got Peter's mind. Everybody, do you see it? So once the blood is covering that area, you are now invisible. The enemy can't see. This is how you overcome get the victory, and get the crown of get your promise in this season. And sprinkle some of it on the altar seven times. Oh. Ever you that? Sprinkle the blood on the altar seven times. Your altar is your heart. The area where you love Watch this. You know it. You know what, man? I'm not loving God with my strength. I'm giving my strength to other things. That's the area you need to put the blood seven times. This is what the Lord is saying to each and every one of us. Which area is your weakest? You know it. Because when the enemy attacks that area, it's hard for you to pray or connect back with God in that area. You need the blood there so the connection can, you can stay, con- let me tell you, it's the blood of Jesus that keeps you connected to the Father. If you don't put the blood, watch this, if you don't put the blood of Jesus in the heart, you lose contact with the Father. It's like, let me put it this way, in a natural, T-Mobile. If you don't pay your phone bill, you cannot contact nobody. Well, the blood is the form, is what pays the phone bill. So the blood is not in your heart. You cannot hear God in your heart. So there's no connection. The blood is Wafa. to heaven. So the reason why you don't seem to hear God in certain areas, there's no blood there. But now you have instruction. The Lord says, Leviticus 8, 11, sprinkle some of it seven times and anoint the altar and its vessels and the basins and the stand and consecrate them. As you put the blood in the five areas where we are commanded to love him, it will be consecrated, sanctified, and anointed. If you don't put the blood on your body, the enemy will attack you with sickness. Not only put on the full armor of God, yes, Jesus said put on the blood in the season. Because the blood gives you the victory. In court. Deuteronomy 31 verse 10. And Moses commanded them at the end of every seven years. Ooh, I love the word. At the end of what? Seven years. At the set time of the year of release. At the feast of the booth. Everybody, you hear that? That's a revelation. Don't miss this. At the end of of seven days. See? Not just seven years. At the end of seven days. At the end of seven hours. At the end of seven weeks. At the end of seven years. 
at the end of seven decades, at the end of seven generations, there is release. At the set time of the, in the year of release, did you hear that? Guess what? There are certain things the law will not release to you or release from you or release you out of to the end of seven. So there are some things you are struggling with. It might take seven years, seven days, seven weeks, seven hours, depending on the set time of release. See what Moses said here? Wow. Can I give y'all a hug? Oh, my God, I love the word. That means the promises, the inheritances, the blessings, all those things, there is a set time of it to be released, and it's usually at the end of the seventh number. It could be the seventh month, which we are in right now. It could be the seventh hour. It could be the seventh day. It could be the seventh week. Elijah prayed seven times, and he raped. That is the way of the Lord. So imagine if we come to him seven times a day, what would he release to us? My God in heaven, Deuteronomy 31, that's the answer right there. Second one, third one, there you go. At the end, remember he said I'm the beginning and the end. At the end of seven years, Moses, who was face to face, began to teach them times of years of release, that God works this way. At the end of seven years, it's a year of release. I mean, everybody don't miss this. You can't rush God's process. If you don't come to the end of your seventh year, see? Seventh week, seventh hour, seventh month. There's no release. The release happens at the end of seventh. Mm, come on. So we are in the seventh month. What's he going to release? You go to him seven times a day. What is he going to release to you? My God. Oh, please. All of you, please get it. Please get it. If you go to Jesus seven times in a day, at the end of the seventh time, what's he going to release to you? God. In the natural and the spirit, what are you going to release? I won't testify yet. What are you release today? Natural and spiritual. Obedience. I'm telling you. He released you. Do you want to be released from soul ties? Ah, I don't miss it. Do you want to be released from attachment? You want to release from entanglement? You want to be released from that demon? At times, the Lord allow you to wrestle with it for seven. You see how he works? Seven means complete. Moses commanded them. That's a command. Leviticus 23, verse 4, 41. You shall celebrate it as a feast of the Lord for seven days in a year. Go to number seven again. Seven days in a year, it is a statue forever throughout your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. What month are we in? I'm sorry. I need to go to Pluto. Fly somewhere right now. Revelations are beautiful direction. Do you hear that? Huh? Leviticus 23 verse 41 says, In the seventh month. My God, my God, my God. What month are we in? We're in the seventh month. You shall celebrate the feast to the Lord. How many days? Seven days. You see what he said when you come to him seven times? Seven days. You shall celebrate. Everybody, what does what celebration mean? Victory. Celebration means the promise has come. We are about to celebrate. So 
So shout, shout in the celebration. All the scriptures go together. Not just revelation from Jesus' face. The scriptures also, the scriptures, the written is the scroll. Not today, maybe Monday or Tuesday, I saw seven seals in his hand again. But these were new seals. Can I say it again? Leviticus 23 verse 41, you will celebrate in the seventh month. Receive the word. That's it. He says, you shall celebrate it when? In the seventh month. Moses gives specific commands from the Father's face huh? that we need in a year. So that's what we're supposed to be doing this month. Set aside seven days just to celebrate the Lord. And we are already in it seven times a day. It's in the way, my friend. What seven days should we set up on? In the seventh month. Mm. I'm excited. First instruction. The, the third instruction is this one. Celebrate. Start celebrating. Okay. This is how faith works. You have to... Okay, let's, let's do it this way. This is how faith works, right? If you know you're going to get a billion dollars, what will you do? Will you start celebrating? Okay, good. That's how faith is. Faith is to celebrate it before it comes. Celebrate like you already have it, but it's not there. That's it. That's the faith that pleases the Lord. So you don't have to see to celebrate. You celebrate before you see. You believe before you see. So this month, what are you celebrating? You are celebrating the Lord for the house, even though you're not in the house. Start celebrating Him for those things you don't have yet, and you'll be in it. Celebration is the key. Leviticus 23:41. That's for everyone. The seventh month. What are we doing? Celebration. Victory. See? But you need the blood. You see how each scripture go together? From the first one, it says, The word of God purify you and refine you. So, even this seventh month, we're still going to be purified and refined. The perfect, look. Jesus told me purification and cleansing never ends. It's an ongoing work. He's doing every day, purifying, cleaning, purifying. And he said seven months is increased because he has to present us spotless to the Father. That's law. I feel like celebrating. When you score a goal, what do you do? You celebrate. You celebrate. Why do you celebrate? Yes, he says. Yeah, you, you shall celebrate it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in a year. When? Throughout your generation. You shall celebrate it. Which month? The seventh month. In the way, Leviticus. It's a face-to-face book for Moses. I keep hearing this song about I've been singing it all day. That's my father. And do you see the way? We are in the set time of release because we are the end of seven months. As much as we are in the beginning of seven, mm-hmm. we are at the end of seven years. Did you know that? You said, how? Remember what the Lord been saying? 2010 to 2000 and what? 17? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 2023 is the second seven. Let me say it again. 2010 to 2017. That was the first seven years of the end times. 2017 to 2023 
We are at the end. My God, my God. Somebody catch it. We are at the end of another seventh year. That's why 2024, the earth will be what? 6,000 years old. It's time. At the end of seven, there's a release coming in 2024. Full, fullness. At the end of seven years, there's a release. So 2024, we already know what's coming. But you see, the sons of Issachar, they knew the times and seasons and what we need to do. What do you need to do? This seventh month, the Lord says, can you set aside coming to me seven times a day or doing seven days this month? Something. Mm. Third one, or fourth one, he said, tell them to write down seven things. Don't miss this. Let me show you. No, first, let me show you the scripture. One second, please. Colossians 3, verse 1. If ye be risen with Christ, Seek those things which are above where Christ seated at the right hand of God. Write down seven things from above that you want him to release here. Seven. Because seven means what? Release. It's not only rest and completion. Seven means release. Write down, ever on the line, he said, we should write down seven things. And then you are to bring those seven things when you come to him seven times a day. Bring the seven. So each time you go to him, you are presenting the seven before him. So can you imagine? You are bringing seven things from above seven times a day. Ah. Uh, God, it will be released. And again, write down seven things. Mm -hmm. What was in Jesus' head? Seven stars. He told John, write what you see and hear in a book. Let me show you another one in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words I have spoken unto thee in a book. Yes, Lord, I will tell them. Tell them to write all the words. I have spoken to them in a book. Those promises that he made you rather in a book. Get a book and write down the promises, the rewards, the blessings that he told you. So he says, see that? Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. What have he spoken to you? Write that in the book. Don't write your seven. Write down the seven he told you. Basically, it's like, if you love me, keep my words. That means bring the word he gave you to him. Don't bring your words. Write in a book all the words I have spoken to you. What has he spoken to you? 
he said, write it in the book and bring it seven times a day. See, that's how, yes, Lord, I will tell them. Mm -hmm. I love how the Holy Spirit navigates the scriptures to verify and confirm what he's saying. Watch this. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 1, verse 10. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then the Lord said unto me, Thou hast seen well. For I will hasten my word to perform it. Second one, see? This, that's, let me go to ESV. ESV is better. He said, I am watching over my word to perform it. What did I tell you? So goes back to the Jeremiah 30. He says, write the words that I spoke to you. Now when you bring the words I've spoken to you, I'm watching over those words I told you to perform it. That's why the enemy makes you forget what God told you. Do attack. Write it down. Oh, I'm excited for you all. What has the Lord told you this year? What has he spoken to you through the mouth of prophets or dreams or personally? Write it in a book and bring it to him this whole month. He said, I'm watching over my word. That means the seven things you are going to write, it cannot be your word. He won't do it. It has to be his word. He, he said, I'm watching over my word. He said, I'm watching over your prayer. He said, I'm watching over my words that I spoke to you to perform it. That means as we celebrate, he's going to be performing. Performing and granting petitions and requests. But you have to bring the words he spoke to you. What did he tell you? That's what you bring. The Lord spoke to you about something. Write it down. Bring it to him. He's watching over what he spoke to you to perform it in this week. Beautiful. This is the instruction for all of us on the line. On this Sabbath. Be ready for him to perform his work. But you have to see well. That's what he told. Jeremiah, what do you see? You have seen well. Have you seen well what the Lord spoke to you? Have you written down all the words he told you? Or you forgot? He said, I'm watching over my word to perform it. The word he gave you is what he's going to perform. He's watching over it. Like he watches over Israel. Wow. Yes, ma'am. So, like David, we are coming seven times in a day. How is this done? There's eight watches. 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. 9 a.m. to 12 noon. 12 noon to 3. 3 to 6. Right? 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. There are eight watches. So you can choose the watch. One hour. Six to seven. Boom. Twelve to one. Boom. Three to four. Boom. Six to seven. Do one hour seven times a day. Could you not watch and pray with me for an hour? Do one hour. In tw we have 24 hours. Let's talk natural. Mm -hmm. You know, there's 12 hours in a day in God's kingdom. Okay, there's 24 hours. You can use seven hours to get to Jesus. 
seven hours, one hour increment. Okay, I'm going to do two to three. Boom. Rest. Do what I have to do. Okay, five to six. Jesus. See? Give him an hour throughout the day. Choose the hours throughout the day. And give it to him. Amen. 11.45. Not going to hold you long because we are about the Father's business in instructions, direction, and strategy in this season. So I want to open the line. Does anyone have any questions tonight so we can rest? Anybody have any questions tonight before we... I'm excited. Yes, I, okay. I have a question. Okay, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. ahead. I'll answer oh, later. So I was going to ask you, we decree the blood once every time we come the seven times or seven times every, is it once every seven, once every seven times we decree the blood. That's all for that. You decree the blood in the area where you are weak seven times. Okay, so seven yes. times a day or once every time we come seven times when you come to him seven times you want to decree the blood seven times every time you come okay so okay. that will you say let me say this i was telling Corey the same thing today jesus said if your brother sin against you seven times in a day watch this you shall turn to him and forgive him not only 70 seven times but 70 times 7. You see? So you, you, you don't just want to do one time in the 7th. No. You want to reach 400 in a day. Okay. So you want to plead the blood because the blood ever runs dry. Let me, let me show you how. Everyone, everyone, let me teach you how Jesus taught me how to use the blood. He said that you, watch this, everyone in line, you have to eat. I ear gate, mouth gate, nose gate, tongue gate. You have to eat. And you need to, so he would say, open the gate. Okay, Lord, I open my eye gate. Keep the blood set on my eye. The eye is the window to the soul. So it's like you are cleaning your car. You have to, you have to clean your with the blood. Ear gate. I put the blood on my ear seven times. Hmm. I put the blood. We all need the blood on our mouth. It's not clean. Uh huh. When I was doing it, Jesus told me, "Watch this." When I was doing it, Jesus said, "Stay in the mouth." Mm-hmm. I'm not only putting my blood on your mouth, I'm giving you olive leaf and coals of fire on the tongue. Because the tongue is a world. That needs time to be clean. So, what do you say? Lord, I open my ear to you. If I listen to gossip, the blood of Jesus. See? The blood is washing. Cleansing, purifying, seven times. Then that's when it's complete. If you only do it one time, it's not complete. You have to do it seven times. Then watch this. At the end, he will say, decree, I am excellent in soul. But at the end of you, you decree, I am excellent in soul. Okay. So that's what, that's what dunamis means, excellent in soul. So your your soul cannot prosper without the blood. Okay. So whichever area in, I'm going to say it again, the five areas where God said we should love him, if you're not loving him in those areas, you want to put the blood there the most. So his blood can speak. Okay. I got mm, it. Maybe my hands. Maybe I use my hands to do something I'm not supposed to do. You put the blood on your hands seven times. 
because it says, lifting up what? Clean hands and pure heart. Yes. If your hands is dirty, you've got to put the blood there seven times. Then it's complete. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, anybody else tonight? Yes, yes, Bob. Uh, uh, um, yeah, that's powerful what you just said. Uh, the, uh, but one thing that I'm, I am didn't get overheard when you said about the praying seven times a day, you know, every uh, wash hour, but when you go for one hour, is you going to do praise and worship and thanksgiving and prayers or... Oh, uh, you saw. How would you want to respect the dragging of that part where you said? However, the Holy Spirit leads you, but the wisest way is because okay. wisdom is. Okay. You can do 12 to 1. Okay. Then rest. Okay. Then 3 to 4. Then rest. You want to use wisdom. Wisdom is the key. Or if you can do 7 hours, go ahead and do 7 hours. But wisdom is. Spread it out throughout the day so you can cover your whole day with prayer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I say to everyone, and don't miss for watch for sure. Mm -hmm. If you do, you can do six throughout the day, but leave at least one hour for for watch or leave three hours out of the seven. Let me say this. I suggest to you, the seven visitations you're going to visit him, leave three of them for four watch. Three, four, five, six. You come to him three times during four watch. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can come to him any other time during the day, but preserve three of them for four watch and do 36. Mm -hmm. What is he going to release to you when you are done? Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Anybody else tonight, please, before we end? Before we end, because we don't want to, we don't want to miss fourth watch. We want to rest before fourth watch. One minute just to make sure everybody. I have one more question, Sophie. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's about the shouting. So we shout in fourth block. You can you, you can shout at any time, but let okay. him tell you. See, so he has to give us those instructions to do that. Yes, yes, you the instructions to shout. That's right. Okay. You can shout. You can shout fourth watch. Yes, but let him tell you when to use the shout. The okay. shout is the shout is the roar of a lion. You know, lions they don't roar at any just any time. They roar at a specific time. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was all. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Anybody else? Anybody else to move? Oh, amen. It's the time for everything. Time to give. A time to rest and receive. So much has been given tonight. It's time for us to go and rest at the feet of Jesus and receive more of him in Jesus' name. So by God's grace, we'll be on the line again tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to do, we, tomorrow, tomorrow is what we're going to do. Tomorrow, everyone on the line, tomorrow we are doing 
purification and cleansing together. Everybody, please come on. Very important. The, the example that I gave, he said he wants us to do it corporately. So lift up he heads, O E H N D. Which areas we're going to do it together on the line? Mouth gate, ear gate, tongue gate. We're gonna be, we're gonna go through confession. That's our mouth, ears, eyes, clean and pure. And then we're gonna decree we are excellent in soul. Do them. In Jesus' name. So love you all. God bless you all. We have spent time with the Father in Jesus and the Holy Spirit at Fourth Watch. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, Shabbat. Shalom to each and every one of you. Well, have a good morning.